Hi, AP Bio. Welcome. We are going to be doing the Cellular Respiration Lab for AP Biology today. And the question we're going to be testing is, does the type of seed affect the rate of cellular respiration? So what we have set up so far, um, I've been germinating some different peas and seeds and beans in an incubator um, so that they would begin germinating. And what I mean by germinating is that they're starting to sprout. So we can actually see here in our beaker, we do in fact have some that are beginning to sprout. So we have that for a couple different types of seeds and beans and peas. And we're going to test if that species or type is going to impact their rate of cellular respiration. I also have a water bath set up at room temperature. And we're going to be using the different seeds, germinating and non-germinating, uh, in our experiment today. So we have peas as well as mung beans. And what I'm going to start by doing is finding 20 of the peas that are germinating, so they're starting to sprout. And I'm going to take the volume of them using a graduated cylinder and using properties of displacement to determine the volume of the peas. So I have my 20 germinating peas, and I also have my graduated cylinder filled with 30 milliliters of water. I'm going to place these into the cylinder to determine the volume of germinating peas. Okay, so now if I were to measure this again, it's now up to 38 milliliters. So the peas take up eight milliliters of volume. I'm gonna now find eight milliliters of volume for all of my other um, experimental conditions, the beads, germinating and non-germinating species of peas and mung beans. Now you can see we have our different seeds germinating or non-germinating as well as the beads for our control, all with equal volumes, volume of eight milliliters. Now we're gonna set up the respirometers. You'll notice I put on some gloves. Uh, this is to protect myself from the chemicals we use in this lab. I will be using potassium hydroxide, so it's important that I wear gloves to protect myself and my skin. So I'm going to be adding potassium hydroxide onto absorbent cotton and putting that in the bottom of my respirometer tool. Then I'm going to cover that with some non-absorbent cotton and then I'll place my different specimen, the beads, germinating peas, non-germinating peas, or the mung beans. And then I will set up the respirometer in my water bath and we will measure the rate of cellular respiration. So here we have our reaction for cellular respiration. This should be familiar to us. We have glucose and oxygen in our reactants, and in our products we have carbon dioxide, water, and energy. Now looking at this reaction, we could think of lots of different ways to measure the rate of cellular respiration. We could measure the amount of glucose that's consumed. We could measure the amount of oxygen being consumed or we could measure the amount of carbon dioxide being produced or the amount of water being produced. These are all ways we might measure the rate of cellular respiration. In this lab, we are going to be measuring the rate of cellular respiration as the amount of oxygen consumed. Now, in order for us to be able to measure that, we do have to use something to cancel out this carbon dioxide because otherwise, for every oxygen that's consumed, one carbon dioxide is produced. So that evens out in terms of the gases. So what we use in this lab is potassium hydroxide or KOH. And we use potassium hydroxide because when potassium hydroxide interacts with carbon dioxide, it's gonna give us a solid potassium carbonate. And that is gonna mean when we're measuring our reaction as the volume 
of the gases change, it is solely because of oxygen being consumed. So we no longer have to deal with carbon dioxide being produced because when it is produced, it interacts with our potassium hydroxide, leaving us with a solid and water. So we're able to measure the rate of cell respiration solely on the amount of oxygen being consumed. So we're soaking the absorbent cotton that's at the bottom of our rust barometer setup with potassium hydroxide. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now I'm going to add this non-absorbent cotton on top of the potassium hydroxide soaked cotton. This is to protect our specimens um, and prevent them from touching the potassium hydroxide, which could be harmful. So now I have my respirometer set up with the potassium hydroxide soaked cotton ball at the bottom and that non-absorbent cotton on top. Now I'm going to be adding my specimens to their individual respirometers. Okay, so now I have all of my respirometers set up, ready to go and be added into the water baths when I add their pipette tips. Just so we can see, here is the mung bean, the one right here, that are non-germinating. And then this other tube is the mung bean that has germinated. We can see the difference with the sprouting. So we have those two conditions. We have conditions for our germinating and non-germinating peas. And finally, we have a control group. We have the one for just the beads, which is our control. These are just plastic beads. Now I'm going to add the pipettes to the top of the respirometer, which is going to be a way for us to be able to measure the rate of cellular respiration. So here are our five respirometers for our different conditions that we're going to be testing in this lab. I'll be adding them into the water bath and then we'll measure the rate of cellular respiration. I'll be adding a small drop of red food coloring to the top of each of our respirometers. That's going to help us take our volume readings a little bit better as they move in the water bath. Here's a finalized respirometer with the food dye at top. We're going to put these into the water baths and measure over time the rate of respiration. We'll be taking readings at four minute intervals.